Hey guys, Mangrel here, and today we're gonna do a beta flight update on our iFlight DC3, and I'll show you what is the quickest and easiest way to do this update, so stay tuned. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that your battery is not connected, or if your battery is connected, that you removed your propellers here. So the general rule is one connection to the drone at, uh, at one time. So if we connect the USB cable, we have to disconnect the battery, or if we connect the battery, we gotta disconnect the USB cable. General rule is one connection at a time. So for the beta flight update, we don't require a battery. So we'll just connect the USB directly into our flight controller. And we see a whole bunch of lights have now turned on. That's a good sign. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you've got the latest beta flight configurator software for your computer. And as of today, which is December the 30th, the latest one is 10.7.0. So you want to make sure you download that. And the way you download is you come down here and you select the one for your computer. So if you've got Mac, Linux, Windows, whatever you have. So we've got this one here and I've already installed this. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna download the software for your speed controller. Our speed controller is a BL Heli 32. So we've come to the BL Heli 32 site and we're gonna download the software. And I'll give you links to all of these pages in the video description. So down here it says, uh, go to this Google site and within this Google Drive here, we wanna download for Windows. So you want to download this guy, download. And if you find that the first link to Google Drive doesn't work, you can use the Mediafire link. Okay, and once you have your file downloaded, we'll just have to extract it. So we can see we previously had 32717, now we have 32720, it's a little bit newer version. So we'll just extract it here. We don't need this anymore. Okay, perfect. Okay, next we'll open up our Betaflight software and we'll have to wait for it to show up here. So we'll communication six. We'll connect first and we wanna go under our CLI. First thing we wanna do is see what version do we have on here currently. So we'll say version. So it tells us right now we have version 4.2 and it's the iFlight 722 Twin G Twin Gyro. Okay, so that's perfect. So we know which target we have to do and we know what version we're coming from. And these instructions will only work if you're going through kind of more like maintenance updates versus the really major updates. So if you're, for example, on version 3.9, you don't want to follow these steps. You actually want to go ahead and set up from scratch, or you want to really just use bits and pieces of the command line uh, settings. But for us, we're going from 4.2, and I think the current version is 4.2.5, which are all maintenance releases. So now we're going to do a diff all, and this will give us all the changes we have done from our base firmware. So we can see here all the setting differences. So not too many, but we've done some changes here. And then we want to now save this to a file. And then we'll give it a name. And then we'll just double check that it did save. Yeah, so here we've got our file. So we have our version along with we've got all the settings. Perfect, so now we wanna go and do our update firmware. And we know that it was the iFlight Twin G, so we wanna find F22 Twin G, and it says latest one is 4.2.5. Perfect, we'll do full chip erase. We'll do load firmware online. And then we'll say flash firmware. And we can see that we're stuck on the step here, initiating reboot to bootloader. And 
This is a known issue. There's a software that's supposed to fix this, which is the Impulse RC driver fixer. So let's download that and install that. Okay, let's try again. Let's unplug, plug it back in. While we wait, now's a good time to follow us on Instagram. Yep, so there we go. We see that now it is working. So if you have that problem, you want to get yourself the Impulse RC driver fixer. Again, I'll give you all these links in the video description. Now we wait for it to do its thing. Okay, so now it says successful. We want to reboot our flight controller, so we'll unplug it. And then we will plug it back in. And we see it shows up here, connect. And now it says, do you want to apply your defaults? And these are the defaults that the board manufacturer has made. So you want to say yes, otherwise we'll get a board that comes with all the defaults of beta flight. So our gyros may not work, our uh, mappings and things may all be wrong. So you want to say, yeah, apply. So now it'll do another restart. Okay, so this time around, we did not unplug anything. We let the, the board itself do the restart and it's showed back here. We'll say connect. So we can see there's issues. I'm moving this backwards and forwards, but it's going side to side. This is because of the default configuration. It'll be fine. So now we need to apply all of our defaults, but we do see that the firmware has updated to 4.2.5. So let's go back to our CLI. If I type in here version, I should see yeah, 4.2.5, the same board name, so that's good. So now we wanna grab our differential file, which was this guy here. So we just grab everything, copy it, and then we can paste it in. I see that it loads from file, I just copy paste. So enter. So now it's set everything up and now it's doing a restart. Because if we look here, at the very end, there is a save command. So that's why this causes it to actually save and reboot. So now I do a connect and you see everything's good now. And what should happen if I go under my settings here, everything should be exactly the same as it was. If I go under my pit tuning, I've got my profiles, I have my rates, all the stuff that I had already put in here are, are still here. So this is the easiest way to actually do a software update. But again, this is only when you're moving between maintenance releases. If there's a major release, you don't want to do this because there could be changes um, elsewhere that if you bring your prior configuration file over to a new version, it may not give you the full benefit or it may even break something. So that was the beta flight. Now we want to do a double check on our speed control. And now we want to open up our BL Heli Suite 32. And here is where you want to remove your propellers from the uh, drone and you want to plug it in. So make sure you've removed your propellers. So let's plug it in. Okay, now we will open up the software. And then we know we're going to be COM6, connect. We'll do a read set just to make sure everything works. Yep, yeah, so it's read everything in. Okay, so we see we are version 32.7. So we come here. No, it looks like we already have the latest version, 32.7. So nothing really to do here. All right, so now let's take it outside and give it a quick try before we do a proper flight. <laughs> it blew up. We already tried it out outside but it started to rain, so we'll film this portion inside. What I'd like to do is just rock the drone back and forth a little bit on the ground, just to make sure that everything seems to work. Then do a quick hover, then we should be good to go. Hope you all enjoyed this video. It was just a quick way for you to do your beta flight updates without having to go through and 
reconfigure every single little painstaking piece. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment.